I'm Chef Michael from the Culinary School of the Rockies. I'm going to be showing you how to make chicken stock. Chicken stock is one of the key or essential ingredients in the kitchen. You can do so many things with it. I want to do what is called a white chicken stock today. Stock is categorized into two main categories, white stocks and brown stocks. In this case, we're going to be making a white chicken stock, meaning I'm not going to roast the chicken parts or the chicken carcasses and I'm not going to roast my vegetables ahead of time. I'm going to throw everything in as is. It's going to give us what is called a white stock versus a brown stock on the other hand. You're actually going to roast your bones and you're going to caramelize or cook your mirepoix ahead of time. The main difference will be number one, color, and number two, flavor. Our stock's going to be darker in color because we've roasted those items ahead of time and we're going to have a little more complex flavor from the caramelization that has occurred from the roasting process. In this case, I want to keep it nice and light or golden in color. It's going to be a neutral stock, so I can do a number of things with it. A number of sauces can be made, a number of soups can be made from this stock. I make a stock using a stock pot at least this size. I would never want to go any smaller. Um, it's a shame to go through the process. It's a several hour process. It's a shame to go through it and only have a quart of stock left. So this carcass has been cooked. These pieces of chicken or this, these particular carcasses have not been cooked. So what I've done is taken the chicken off of these in the past, cooked it, and I've frozen these chicken carcasses. So when I make stock, I'm usually using a combination of some frozen chicken parts and some roasted chicken parts, putting them all together. What I want to do is look at my stock pot and I never measure things for stock. I look at the amount of stock I want to make and I eyeball it. So what we're going to do is first and foremost put the bones in the pot. I want to make sure I have collected enough bones here to come about a third of the way up my pot. So if you're making a larger batch of chicken stock, it'll require just a few more bones. If you want to make one small batch of chicken stock, you could literally do it with one chicken carcass. The bones really important to number one rinse them so I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna clean my bones I don't want a lot of blood and I also want to make sure I don't have a lot of flesh on the bone or a lot of fat on the bone those two things will actually cloud the stock and give us a stock that's not clear but cloudy a clear stock is exactly what we're looking to do today so I have pulled off any pieces of fat from these frozen pieces. I've rinsed them, they're sitting in a colander draining. There's not much left on this small carcass. It's all going to go into our stock pot first. I'm not worried about my vegetables. Start with your bones. And what I have here, primarily just chicken backs. If you have leftover wings, you certainly can throw the wings in. What you're looking for more than anything is the back. That portion of the animal contains the most collagen. The collagen under heat is converted to gelatin, and that's what's giving our stock its body. Vegetable stock, you don't need to worry about that. You're obviously not dealing with collagen and gelatin. Any type of stock you're making with animal, you are going to worry about extracting the most possible collagen, giving your stock body. So, this filled the pot about a third, and that's exactly what I'm looking to do. The first thing you want to do with any stock you're making is your bones are in the pot. I'm going to now fill this with cold water. I'm not going to worry about my vegetables, and I'll explain that in just a moment. So I'm going to fill this with cold water straight from the tap. However, if your tap water is, tastes a lot like chlorine, use caution, and you actually probably want to use some filtered water in that case. I like my tap water here, so I'm going to trust it, and I'm just going to use it straight from the tap, making sure it is cold. Okay, so what I've done here is um, filled my stock pot with cold water. First thing I'm going to do is get flame on high below our stock pot. Like I said earlier, I have not added any of my vegetables yet. I want to make sure I am bringing this cold water to a simmer or a boil as quickly as possible. What this is doing, it's allowing me to start to clarify my stock. I don't want any of my vegetables interfering with this clarification process, so I'm just gonna bring this to a boil first by itself. 
As it's boiling, some of the impurities in those bones will come to the surface. I'm going to take a trusty ladle at this point in time, and as I, th as I see things coming to the surface, I'm just going to skim them off. Try not to take too much of the water, but taking as many of those impurities away at this point. This is going to help us keep a nice clear stock. Remember I said we're trying to avoid a cloudy stock. So I'm going to continue skimming my stock until it comes to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to introduce my vegetables. The vegetables in this case are giving us a nice neutral flavor without overpowering or giving us a stock that cannot be used for a number of different things. What I'm going to introduce next is called a mirepoix, a classic French culinary term meaning roughly equal parts of carrot, yellow onion, and celery. I've peeled the carrots, certainly cleaned the celery, peeled the onions, and everything is about a large dice in this case. I'm not that concerned with my knife cuts because I'm going to be straining this out later on. Um, what I'm going to do now is add our mirepoix. In addition to our mirepoix, I'm going to add what is called a bouquet garni, another fun French term. So what I have in my bouquet garni are some sprigs of fresh thyme into our stock. I have some parsley stems. As you can see, most of the leaves are away from these parsley stems. I've used those in something else, and I've reserved my stems. The stems have wonderful flavor, which, are go which is going into our stock, and I'm not worried about these leaves actually making our stock green. If you, use if you use something that is too green, meaning too much chlorophyll, you're actually going to risk the chance of having a green stock. We do not want a green stock, so I'm going to keep most of these out, just using the stems like I said. Bay leaves. Make sure your bay leaves are either fresh or dried and they haven't been sitting around too long. And then lastly, I have here some whole peppercorns and I'm using a pinch or maybe two. It's probably about six or seven. Throw them in. This is all the stock requires. I am not adding salt. I am not adding wine. This is it. Um, what I'm going to do now is let this simply boil. I don't want it to be rapidly boiling, so I'm going to watch and make sure I don't have big bubbles. I want a gentle simmer. If it is actually boiling too rapidly, you risk the chance of the stock clouding or it's sort of stirring too much and it's not allowing it to naturally clarify itself. I'm not going to stir my stock at this point. I'm going to take my ladle and I'm going to occasionally go right on the surface of my stock, just skimming off any foam or any impurities that, that I see coming to the surface. And now it's just a waiting game. I personally like to simmer my stocks for at least five hours, five to eight hours. If you trust your oven, oh, I'm sorry, if you trust your stove top, let it go overnight. You can, if you have a nice, um, very low flame beneath the stock, let it go overnight. Stock that can simmer overnight is going to be a little bit better. If you are going to allow your stock to go for a long period of time, you're going to walk away from it. Make sure you fill it up to the top with water so you don't lose too much stock when you're away from your stock. Like I said, the most, one of the most difficult things is maintaining that gentle simmer. You don't want too much of a boil. You want just a nice gentle simmer with your stock. When this stock has simmered for five to eight hours, I am going to turn the heat off and I'm going to strain it. I usually strain it into a large container. You could use a colander to strain it. You could use what is called a chinois, and that's a fine mesh strainer. Whatever you have to catch the solids will work. I'm going to strain it into something clean and let it sit on the counter and cool down. As the stock cools, you're going to notice you're going to get a lot of fat on the surface of the stock. You can skim that fat off, you can divide it into small containers, and you can freeze it that way. The second option is once you've skimmed that fat off, you can put it back on the stove in a clean pot and you can actually reduce it or just let it boil. When you're reducing anything, you're taking most of the water out and concentrating flavor.